Scott Stewart, thanks for joining us. Thanks for the Kilmore Harness Racing Club to talk about your superstar pace, a bit of bliss. So I'm back to back Kilmore Cups, but Kilmore's been a special place f for you and your family, but you were a young kid when you moved to Kilmore. Yeah, I was only like five when we um, moved up here and we were like just across the road, like 300 metres from where we're sitting now is where yeah. we grew up. Yeah. Was harness racing the sport that you always wanted to get into? Uh, not necessarily. Um, going through school, I was not fussed. They were, horses were always there. They had them started off in Reservoir at Gale Park. There was always one or two in the backyard. And then I thought Dad said, we well, may as well get a license and started driving. But I just kept going to school and went to Dookie College for a couple of years. But after that, yeah, I thought that I'd get into it. There was a job there with Vinny when I yeah. finished that, yeah. What was it like winning into Dominion for Bob and Vinny with Jody's babe? Probably at the time I didn't I didn't really appreciate it. Twenty one year old, just it's all a whirlwind, you know, living yeah. living a pretty good life. Um like I say, did, didn't really appreciate it, but it was still a great great time in my life, yeah. Jody's babe on the outside, getting to Jody's babe is running up on the outside. Jody's babe beat now my straight by a long head. Bit of bliss. He was he was so talented. Um, your family bred him. Tell us about the story, how um, he came about. Dad and I started, thought we might buy, buy one of the yearling sales one, one year. There was a horse we'd like, Rainbow Alto, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. he, he was a really good two-year-old. His sister came up for sale, so we bought her, which was Petite Alto. Yep. She, she was a nice little filly, no, no star. Made a Vic Bread final, I think, at three, but no star, and then um, just just bred, you know, started breeding with her when she finished. Had a couple of hits and misses, and then uh, when you know every year that you get the the stowing catalogs and the videos, and we have seen um, what Blissful Hall had done, you know, before he come out, and just thought yeah, we'll go there, and yeah, the rest was history. Yeah. When did you realise that Bitter Bliss was well above average? So we got him into the semi, which was opening night at Melton. Drawing 12, like at yep. the time, Melton was red hot leader. Yeah. Um, and he, he ran an eighth or something, missed out. So, I, and I think I give him one more start and one, and to put him away. And then at three, he come back really good. And I thought we might have had a Derby horse, but he, I think he got hurt. He hurt something and had to, have, you know, go out and start again. Mm. But then that next preparation, he just he he just kept getting stronger and stronger for me. So after that four-year-old campaign, you put him out. It was a Kilmore Cup firmly um, at the front of your mind that you, you thought, well, this is my chance that I can win a Kilmore Cup with with a horse like this? Yeah, when when we got him back in work, I remember saying to Dad, yeah, we might have a look at the Kilmore Cup. You know, we'd, we'd never have one ever good enough, you know, to run, him, run in it. And, you know, yeah, you think you're a chance. And he was such a lovely horse, like the stand and start was never an issue. And, yeah, it all just all fell into place beautifully. So 2011, as a five-year-old, um, you have a crack at the Kilmore Cup. Talk us through about the, the build-up to that race. Um, I think early in uh, the preparation after a spell, I, I said to Dad, we might have a go at that, and he was, he was giving me like two <laughs> thumbs up for sure, you know. So it, it all just went to plan. He had a really good prep. Uh, the stand and start was never an issue with him. He was such a lovely horse. Um, and, that, and race day got here, it was a bit full-on because... You know, we lived here forever, so coming back with the favour for the cup was yeah. a pretty good day. But uh, the race panned out. I, there was a couple in it. No disrespect to anyone, but I thought he was he was better than. Uh, I just thought he was in a better class, and um, the race yeah, worked yeah. out pretty good. And he was he was too strong for him. It's bitter bliss in front. Bitter bliss is Kilmore Cup. Bitter bliss won it. So he races yeah. away. He wins just over by a metre. You win a Kilmore Cup. No. Basically, a hometown cup. What was it like, no, was, especially to share it with the old man? Yeah, it was it was pretty pretty good buzz day, eh? and just the reception. I, I remember walking back into the parade ring, like the old horse even had startled him. Just the reception we got coming back into the um, into the mountain out here. It was, yeah, it was unbelievable too. Yeah, and even guys to share it with guys like Mick Blackmore, who's been a clerk of the course here forever. Like he was one of the first ones. You know, yeah. just share it with all these people that I've known all my life. It, it was really good. And then the next year. Was it extra satisfying? Because talk us through what happened after winning the Kilmore Cup as a five-year-old. While he was off um, 10 metres, it, it, that wasn't an issue because the year before we were off the second row, so there was no 10-metre tape anyway. Yeah. That was never an issue. Um, and he was really good again. Um, Caribbean Blaster, I think, was first up. Yeah. 
in in the race and uh, he found the front early and I thought well I was pretty happy with mine so I'll go and sit outside him because I, I always felt a bit of bliss may being a bit a bit quicker mm. you know acceleration on Caribbean blast and I while I sat outside him I tried to not make it a, a tough race and I, I think that worked out right. It was a great worry, Caribbean <clears throat> Blaster, but your horse, his high speed was electric, but you still had the ability that you could put him in a race like that and, and sit outside the leader and win Kilmore Cups. Yeah, sure. And yeah, he was strong enough, but it, more speed was more more his go. I think, you know, the standard starts that, that allowed you to use him during the race a bit because yeah. you weren't doing that early burn. Yeah. He won that Kilmore Cup, and then what happened after that? Because he came back and tried to win a third Kilmore Cup and create history. Yeah, that we after that Kilmore Cup, we had another go at the Vic Cup, I think, and later on in the season, the Hunter Cup and that. Yeah. As he, it seemed as he got older, he, the preparations got shorter. You know, his age yeah. and a few little issues would catch up with him. And I, I had another go the next year, but 20 metres... Too it hard. was always too hard. And he, he wasn't the same horse as the previous two years anyway. It sounded like Kilmore, in a funny old way, got to see the very best of Bit of Bliss. It was like when you had him at the peak of his powers, um, compared to, say, unfortunately, like you, you would have probably would have liked to have him um, feeling as good as he was in a Kilmore Cup and have him like that in, in a Victoria oh, Cup. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. It seemed that, yeah, those two years, um, that was when he was at his best, those two years we turned up. Was it extra special when you look back now and you have a beer with your brother and a few of your mates that they're winning back-to-back -back Kilmore Cups oh, after yeah. the journey and the relationship that you've had with this town and this club? Yeah, that first one, definitely. Dad, Dad wasn't here the second one. You know, he, he, he was in hospital crook by then, but yep. still, yeah, just that family connection. Yeah. Yep. And what do you reckon, Vinny? He would have been pretty proud as well, I'm, I would imagine. I'm pretty sure he would have yeah. been, yeah, yeah, yeah. The young kids won a couple of Kilmore yeah. Cups. All that time um, with him didn't go to waste, yeah. Yeah.